So we are ready to call to order uh, the <coughs> continuing meeting of the Monroe County. Uh, so this will be our call to order. Uh, the first item on today's agenda is the clerk's election central update. I think we're going to hear a little bit more about what's going on with early voting. Indeed, we are. Uh, early voting started on October 8th, and that day, very day we voted 1,093 people. Since then, we voted an average of more than 1,000 people per day as of 6 o'clock last night when we closed, when the polls closed for the day. It was 5,431. As of 12.30 today, we have had 552 voters to check in for a total of 5,983 voters who have reported in person to cast a ballot in the presidential election. This represents 6.3% of our total number of registered voters. Um, I wanted to touch base on a couple of comments and concerns that we've been getting a lot recently. Um, one of which is RFK still being on the ballot. Um, I just want to clarify so that it's- you be more specific, yeah. Robert, yes. Yeah, um, I just want to kind of clarify on what it was. Um, we've had quite a few individuals who are upset about RFK still being on the ballot and are um, actually are also reaching out You're to- You're talking about Robert- uh, Robert Kennedy. Kennedy yes. in the presidential election. Yes. Um, and they've been reaching out to Valerie with IED and a few others up there about it. Um, I do want to make sure that everybody knows that the deadline to withdraw from the presidential race was July 15th, and he did not fill out any paper at all with the state of Indiana. So it's not just the Monroe County ballot that has him on it. It's everybody in Indiana that does have him on the ballot. And then um, the only other thing that we've really had is about signage. Um, we've had a few complaints about um, not having any of the um, Trump signs out in the front area and that there are some that have been removed from the front area. Um, it's not our responsibility to make sure that they are out there. It comes down to the um, party and the candidate and their teams to make sure that those signs get out just to make sure everybody knows that we can't determine which signs are going to be there and we can't determine which signs are going to be taken out of there. I appreciate that. I can uh, report that I had a sign removed from my front yard. Uh, it wasn't a Trump sign in case you're wondering. Uh, but uh, but it, it is an important reminder that uh, under uh, the law, uh, removing people's yard signs is uh, prohibited. Yes. And there are, are actual penalties uh, related to that. So we would encourage people to uh, respect everybody's uh, right uh, to express their um, opinions and preferences when it comes to uh, elections and candidates. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Are there any other issues? Um, not really. Just making sure that everything continues to be caught up and that everybody is staying focused. Um, we've had a high number of voters come in, and so we went from half staff to full staff for this week. So from here on out, it'll be fully staffed at early voting. And the only other thing is just making sure that the voters continue to have patience with us as there is quite a few coming through in big bulks of groups and then it will die down for a little bit and then it gets busy again. Um, we do have some lines um, once it gets to the checkout portion. So you're out of the weather at least. So we're hoping that everybody can continue to be patient with us. And at, at, I think at the last meeting you had referenced some needs to uh, you know, clarify some of the operational pieces related to parking and worker parking. Have there been any issues? Uh, we've regard? not had any other issues. We did have somebody that actually blocked the exit yesterday, so we just had to go and have them make, move their vehicles so people could get in and out of the parking lot. But other than that, it's been pretty solid right now. Any questions or comments from colleagues? Public? Online. Okay, we'll go to uh, old business. We have a couple of items. Uh, the first one relates to the delegation of Canvas uh, reporting. Um, I, I'm going to try and frame this up, and and others who have more institutional memory can correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, but this is one of those things under uh, the law, the Indiana title that relates to. Um, 
roles and responsibility of the election board is that we have the opportunity to delegate uh, certain duties to uh, the clerk of the circuit court. I think historically we've always done the um, delegation, but nobody can find any record of of technically doing it. Um, as I read the as I read the statute, it, it applies to the terms of the clerk. And so if we don't have some of these agreements in place from this election board to the current clerk, then this is in, in part a bit of a housekeeping item. Is that correct? The other thing that is, um, uh, you know, I've read the statute, but I haven't read any case law. So, you know, I, I don't even, it, canvassing is not a defined term. Uh, which is kind of odd because in other parts of the code reverses, re refers to tallying votes and there's a lot of prescriptive ways to do that. The canvassing also has some prescriptive language, but it doesn't really define what canvassing is. I'm assuming canvassing means actually generating uh, the results of the election and then conveying that information uh, to the unofficial results to the state. Uh, so we need to do a delegation in part as housekeeping, uh, but it looks like in, there's an opportunity that we can be specific if we need to in terms of how we define canvassing. Is that is that how other folks are looking at this or? Yes. Okay. Yes. <laughs> but we need to actually specifically Are set there those any, forth. If, if we want to be very specific, we can, or we can keep it kind of vague. I think, um, you know, for me, I think, you know, the elephant in the room is, you know, how are we going to do the reporting? And uh, if there's some direction we want to express, we probably should. Well, um, how have you done it in the past, Nicole? Because you have been doing that even without this delegation, correct? Yes. Okay. What what I have done um, to send to send out emails to um, the media, primarily, um, it got to be a huge thing in terms of candidates and parties and interested parties and things. So for me to um, not have to keep revising the list. I've just limited it to the newspaper and online and television media um, in the community. And then if other people want it, then I ask them to check um, with the party chairs because the party chairs also get the email. They're on that list. That seems reasonable. Um, I guess the only thing I would want to make clear is that um, any of those duties are just not delegated to a third party vendor. Other than doing what you've always done seems to have worked in the past. Well, so. Yeah, I, I would, as I understand the mechanics of it, is that, um, you know, the writer we have, uh, BNL administers elections, takes care of the machines, ensures that everything's in working order. Uh, you know, we do the, um, uh, the dry run to look for any potential issues with counting and tallying. And, you know, we've sat through those presentations and meetings and see how it all works. Um, but then the um, actual communication and uh, tallying, if you will, of the results is is a two-step process. One is that uh, from is doing the counting, uh, we receive a thumb drive with the results as they're updated on a you know regular basis. That thumb drive is put into a different computer. Uh, to express results, and then there's a manual process of filling out uh, data by candidate. Is that correct? Yes, so that will be through SVRS. You have to hand enter those results into SVRS. 
And what is SBRS? Statewide voter registration system. Okay. So we're using essentially that same process for doing the tally that Nicole then shares with uh, the parties and with the media. Is that correct? And that's done via a PDF or is it an Excel document? Uh, generally it's done with a PDF. So it seems like there's an opportunity to do a couple of things here. One is to uh, automate some of that process so that we don't have to hand enter a data from one form to another. Is that a possibility? Um, through SVRS, it's not. It would be hand entered. Um, it's just the separate of we do it the way that's by candidate instead of by precinct. Um, it was being done by precinct. Now it's being done by candidate instead. So it's a shorter process than it was with by precinct but it still has to be hand entered. And that's just essentially filling out a, uh, a table that is yeah. prescribed by the state for Correct. their use. So that's one issue, right? So, but then the other um, issue is just how do we uh, share that information with the public and are mm -hmm. there opportunities to improve that process, right? Yeah, and right now that process is um, uploading the PDF to the county website. We've heard from folks that there's a desire to maybe make it more sophisticated in terms of the, the level of information, how it's visually displayed. Yep. Yep. Led to the conversation around using a third party to do that. Correct. So, you know, I've spent a little bit of time looking at the um, of the platform that's been created by the county's GIS team. And it's actually, seems like there would be an opportunity if we wanted to take it, uh, to collaborate with that office to um, find a, a better solution for how we're public in the media. Seems to me that's an opportunity that we ought to explore. The incremental uh, budgetary impact on uh, the election board budget or the clerk's budget. And if that's the case, then uh, I think maybe in this resolution, we could you know, set up a process for doing that and maybe put a working group that includes you know, the election board, election central, the county uh, GIS team, uh, probably get some representation from, or at least some, a couple of folks from that the two major political parties are comfortable with, and let's just get a working group and figure it out. And if we can, we should do it, and if we can't, we don't. But it seems a way to move forward, in my opinion, but I'm open to feedback and reaction from uh, the other uh, board members of the public. Are you talking about a work group in three weeks? Yeah. yeah. I mean, the, um, the framework's already been built. It was built for um, other purposes, but it, it's it's just a matter of uh, making sure everyone's comfortable with the, the math, if you will, how things are, you know, mapped over, and and you know, are things right? Are the borders right? Are we are the tables linked appropriately? Uh, and working with BNL to make sure that the output from the machine, which you know they're supposed to confirm, is whether or not they can. Um, ESV or a XL, either or, but I haven't heard back. But if, if the answer is yes, then uh, it's not going to be a significant lift. I mean, it, I don't want to diminish the lift because I think the team has spent a lot of time in building their model, the platform. But the alternative is that we just do the status quo and hand out updated, you know, PDFs. 
So, I mean, I don't see any reason why we wouldn't want to try. Your main concern, our ability to execute. When you're talking, I think about the vote center work group and, you know, when you say a work group, it sounds labor intensive, time intensive, and, you know, we are voting more than a thousand people a day right now. I agree, but I mean, we would have been doing a similar process if we had contracted with a different third party to do this. No, they were ready to go. Hold it. I just, I just don't understand how you could say that. I mean, they would still need to work with our team to sync up the information, to figure out a secure link, to figure out all the things that would be required uh, for them to safely receive the same information. They already have a platform that they want to plug the data into. Uh, the county's GIS team has a, a platform that we could plug the data into. All I'm asking is that rather than someone unilaterally working with uh, the county GIS team to do that, is that we get a couple of people involved so that there's some transparency, some buy-in and comfort level so that when and if those results are published, that we don't have folks sitting on the outside saying, well, what about this? What about that? Let's get them in the room right now and get. So I, I don't know. Um, I'm just for the hardest possible. If we have a meeting and the parties decide that we can't get it done in time, then we revert to the status quo. I'm willing to put in, you know, a couple of hours to try and figure that out. And if it work, then, you know, that's just my time spent. I think it's a good idea to at least to investigate and see if we can get some people on board. And if you're willing to do that part for the election board, great. I think, you know, Tron, am I overstating uh, the capacity? Hello. Tron and Wright Randolph, Monroe County Surveyor. Um, I think there's a couple different um, things I would like to share. Uh, first, I, I, I think on our end, uh, we just really need direction, precise direction. Uh, we need to know who we can come speak to, to maybe uh, what I think you're referring to is streamline this process. Um, also, uh, there is an opportunity to kind of do it in a formal capacity. Um, the way I look at it is uh, we're prepared to host uh, the public information um, after those results have came in, and but we could do that in, in a collaborative effort too, um, where we're able to work closely with the clerk's office, voter registration and election board. So if there's, you know, little things that could be tweaked that uh, we're not necessarily too intimate with some of the ongoing. So to bring folks in that does have that expertise and they see something that could be valuable and we could customize it and tweak it, then we need that input. Um, the way that we've taken our uh, uh, approach to this is it's publicly available information and if we put it into a geographic information system that data visualization is way more uh, uh, cons uh, consumable by kind of just your run-of-the-mill type of person and also I think it could really start showing data in a way that you know it, it will make people more informed and you know that is my kind of underlining intent with uh, GIS and this type of tool is to uh, allow people to have more information to become more informed and then, you know, determine how they want to move forward. Um, I hope that yields, you know, confidence in their decision, compassion in their decision. But those are things that I don't really need to touch on. But I do think it's a powerful tool. And to put this type of data in there, it would make people more informed. Um, so, uh, we can go about how we normally do it and uh, we can you know host that public information after the fact 
we could create a formal group or if we just need to work directly with voter registration and it can just be kind of a, a self uh, a kind of a county operation that's fine too we just need precise guidance when it comes to you know the authority of the election board and how they want us to move forward or if all about that authority is delegated how the clerk to the clerk how the clerk would like us to move forward too and we'll be of assistance but without that direction i feel like we're just kind of in here because one thing i think is very important and i, I think that's why clerk brown has really wanted to pursue this is this is about valuable resource to the public to provide this data and there's multiple ways to do that and uh we want to uh, help achieve that goal because we want to make that data available to the public. And now we just need to understand how to do that and we're available. Thank you. Other um, comments in the public? Oh, let's say we have a hand up. Yeah, um, looks like sure. Yeah, we have mute. I think you can you unmute, uh, Penny. No, we need our team to unmute the um, online. This pen, please. Working on it. She's going to have to unmute it herself. I think you're you should be able to there go. now I can yep. thank you yep. thanks yeah uh, I just I just wanted to point out that um, you can upload directly a CBS file directly to the SVRS and actually that's going to be probably more accurate than manually entering things thank you so just a, I know we have other stuff on the agenda so I'm don't want to drag this out, but it just seems like um, I'm not talking about some big formal group that's going to meet for six months. I just think we could probably convene a, a small working group, you know, and then that's in a matter of days, not weeks, uh, to level set on uh, what is possible using the framework that's been built, uh, where are the requirements uh, from uh, different um, functions, uh, whether it's voter registration, uh, the election uh, central team, the GIS team or others, to make sure that we can uh, accomplish what I think we all agree would be a good outcome is having a more permanent and um, um, interesting uh, expression of, of you know, how our elections results are um, uh, conveyed and, and looking at turnout and all kinds of interesting data uh, that would be, I think, of use to the public. Uh, but if if the board's comfortable with that, I think we should include that in this resolution and we'll convene the uh, uh, working group and, and see what the art of the possible is. And if it's not possible, then we'll, you know, just revert to the status quo. I don't it seems to me like a reasonable attempt and if, if people don't want to do it then we can vote no and not do it <laughs> so i mean it's you know it's up to the board i think it's a an excellent excellent idea to at least investigate this and try to put something together as soon as possible it can't hurt to get the information and then decide otherwise you know whether it's going to work or not it hopefully will help you in the long run clerk's office so 
I make a motion to establish a working group to try to work out, uh, get results out to the public in the best way possible on election day. Want to be more specific or do you have some thoughts, Molly? <clears throat> well, <clears throat> sorry. My thought is, I and I'm trying to look up um, open door um, law because I know there was a change recently, but I think with the formation of the working group, those groups meetings would also be subject to open door. Um, so, and, and I don't know that you don't want them to be for transparency purposes. I think those could be public meetings and I don't know why they wouldn't. And I just wanted to throw that caveat in there. Yeah, I have no problem with that. I think it should be open. Do you uh, have any thoughts, Molly, on an articulate way to add that to your uh, resolution? Really, it only applies to the second, therefore. I think you could add um, the results shall be reported to and then local media like Clerk Brown was pers um, uh, describing. Um, I don't know if you want to do party chairs or if it just goes to local media. Basically, we could add a sentence that says in some articulate way, which I am drafting right now, that sorry, results will be reported as they have in the past unless the working group dictates a different process. Okay with that. Do you want to work on that? We could move on to uh, a couple I can do that. action items. Mm -hmm. um, who would be involved in the working group? Because I remember when we met with Tron that he did say it would be like the results would be entered from our office and that wouldn't be them entering it. So I'm just trying to make sure that we would be informed also. Absolutely. I mean, to me, if we want to be that specific, I'm happy to, but I think we would want uh, a team member from uh, your office, voter registration, county uh, GIS, uh, representation from the election board and uh, you know, designees from our two um, major party chairs. Okay. While Molly works on that, uh, do you want to move on to uh, the next item, which is the emergency uh, policy resolution? Skip down to new business and handle some of the or administrative functions, why Molly has some thinking time there. Oh, um, I can multitask. Um, okay. So the emergency plan is the draft that I put together, which encompasses the legal process for petitioning for the extension of poll hours and also the process for moving a poll in the need be two days before the election. I think you could also rely that on that statute if we have to move it on election day, but inevitably if you move a poll on election day, you'll be extending hours, so they kind of go hand in hand. Um, Kylie and I met with emergency management who um, looked through the process, through the draft, and they were okay with it. They recommended keeping it pretty basic, given the fact that our poll workers have a variety of life experiences because we you know have students to our more experienced poll workers and so we are trying to keep it as a basic emergency plan um however the procedures outlined in there we kind of worked off of what was provided in the election workers training manual but outside of the legal process i do think it's a policy decision for the election board so i'm happy to amend that in any way um there was some spots that i had highlighted in the draft 
for election um, office or the clerk's office to fill in because it goes more into the logistics of what happens at the poll, which they are far more experts at it than I am. So if you made those additions, you now would be a great time to talk about them. Um, I, do we remember who all that was sent to? The draft I sent out went to you and the election board. Did the election board receive this? I think my computer defaulted to, and I will, um, I can display it. I think it defaulted to the previous version of the election board contact. Um, you got it. Okay. I don't recall getting it, Molly, but I'm double checking. I think it. So I have an election board contact in my email and I think it went to the prior version. Okay. So that's totally my fault. Um, let's see. I can display it. But while I pull it up, did you have the opportunity to fill in those? I was looking through it, but I realized that the election board wasn't on it and that's why I held off because I wanted them to also be able to put in comments because I don't want all of the comments to be from me. I want them also to be from the election board just because I feel like it's more important for them to have input on this. I do understand like more of the like physical like what happens behind the doors on election day for it to come from me, but I wanted them to have input on it as well. Are you are resending that. I'm, di I'm displaying and resending. Sure. Do you need help? I see the beads of sweat rolling off of our uh, IT team right now. <laughs> it's fine. It's okay. I, I I can see it, and I think it's being sent. Not very well, but down if we want. Taking a minute to read this. And uh, Kylie, I'm assuming that this um, in the beginning part of this. 
This is all consistent with the, the language that went into the training packets? Correct. Molly, are you looking for input on the highlighted sections? Yeah, so the first section is just simply notifying first responders. It's simple as call 911 <clears throat> and then follow 911's directions. There is a caveat on D that says that we don't expect poll workers to render first aid. That's mainly because we don't give them the training to do so. Um, on section two, it indicates that uh, if a situation arises, the inspector or the judge is to contact Election Central, and it has that number in there, I believe, for Election Central. And then there's a bit that's highlighted that says um, someone will be responsible for reporting to the election board, and I think that would be the election supervisor, but I didn't want to make that call. So I need to fill in a person's title or an individual there. So. I mean, it can be me also um, with us all there on election day at Election Central. Generally, it's one of the staff members that gets the phone calls and then they report it to us in a whole. So. I mean, that seems reasonable to me. So what I put there, now the sentence reads, upon election, or upon election Central being alerted of a situation impacting the availability and or functioning of a poll location, the election supervisor and or designee will be responsible of properly notifying the election board. So that should cover all of election um, staff. Agree. Um, so the second, the third section is preparation of poll workers and polls. Um, it, the A's that they will be provided emergency procedures in their training packet. Um, B is each worker will receive information specific to his or her poll from the expector. And I don't, is that the night before? That is the Saturday before election day. So for this election, it would be November 2nd. I'm just going to put Saturday before election day to make this not specific to th this year. Um, the information may include but is not limited to um, and then that I don't know what information is provided. So emergency maps, exit for poll locations, uh, emergency contact numbers, the identification of a designated meeting location in the event of emergency is that Correct. encompasses yes. everything or yeah. So each of our locations this year have sent maps that we requested before the general election um, of their emergency. So fire or tornado um, drill plans. And so from the schools, it was easy to obtain, but some of them it was a little bit more complicated, but we did get one from every location. OK, and then C is um, basically saying that emergency supplies will be provided at each poll location, emergency supplies include and I don't know what it includes. I emergency management suggests a weather radio, a flashlight, duct tape, trash bags, a map, and a basic first aid kit. And so I don't even know that you I, I know right now we have a basic first aid kit, a weather map, and a radio. In all honesty, I think it might be easier just to delete that sentence and just say emergency supplies will be available at the poll location and not I I don't know that you need to specify. Yeah. Um, okay, so then the next section gets into more natural disaster or situation specific. So the first one that, um, and obviously the sentence says that this does not include all disasters because that's in essence that emergency just comes up. I can't account for them all. We can't account for them all. So the first one is a power outage. Here, I don't really know procedurally what the election board wants to do. Emergency management says they do not have generators. They would have to go to other counties and get generators. That obviously takes time. I know that some sites have generators, but I don't know that we have access to those generators. And so I guess it's this is a policy question for the election board. If a power goes out at a poll, what do you want people to do? I will note that the scanners and the um, touch riders have backup batteries inside of them so that they can supply off of that. 
and then the pull pads are iPads, so they have the um, battery that is inside of it that can hold for a while. Some of the pull pads that are older have harder times keeping the battery up, so we do have some backup supply that we can rely on, but not for an entire day. It sounds like you got like two to three hours of maybe functionality if the power goes out, but it also is beyond the equipment, right? So if the power goes out, I don't know if there's backup lighting. Like, are we really having people vote and rely uh, on cell phone lights for safety? Like, procedurally, I guess I don't know what to put there. Was this all first impression for Monroe County? Like we don't have this already? If there is an emergency plan specific to elections, I have not seen it and do not have access to it. There's a countywide emergency plan um, but I think it is more broadly than, I don't know that it would account for poll specific situations. I mean, the first issue is safety. The second issue is securing uh, back. And the third issue is that if it's just power outage, do we have the capacity to go to paper ballots? What if you don't have a power to print them? Well, election day ballots are already pre-printed, so we wouldn't have to worry about that until we go to vote centers if we had decided to do that. Um, but early voting, we wouldn't have any ballots if something were to happen. Are they went which voting? Early voting? Early voting, because we print on demand during early voting. It's set up as a vote center, essentially. Um, and then election day is by precinct. So the ballots are pre-printed and sent to their locations. Like, you know, this, other than the, the safety of the individuals, um, not as worried about early voting as I am as day of, uh, but if we have printed ballots, what's the procedure to move to a And count? Well, actual voting manually as opposed to, well, I guess you would just go ahead and fill out the ballot and then we would count them manually, right? Right. So it would just be the difference of scanning the ballot versus hand counting the ballots. We have the authority to, um, if one precinct loses power to designate a another I do know that that is part of this plan that me and Molly were working on. So I think there's two op two possible options that the election board could pursue. One of them would be to designate like an alternative poll site. Obviously kind of late in the game to do that this year. Um, when we were brainstorming ideas of potential poll sites, one option that we think might be a viable source assuming they agree and we would have to talk to their board would be the libraries because um, it, most people know where the libraries are, public parking, there are multiple branches. Um, I think a second option would be to try to relocate to the nearest pole with power as we would already have an established pole site um, that's set up. I, I know that there's probably a legal process for both of those options, but I don't know it off the top of my head at the current moment. Essentially, either way that we went, we would have to transition into a satellite location. So that is one thing that we would have to consider. I guess I'm a little confused of what we're asking for with this um, policy, Molly. I mean, are we focused on safety of poll workers and voters, or are we getting into the weeds of patients or voting process 
or both. I think the intent of the policy was to provide poll workers with the guidance that they need for both safety and procedural mechanisms of what happens and if something goes horribly awry on election day, which we all hope that it doesn't, but if we don't plan for it, then we're really in trouble. And it, so I will say that if we go to vote centers, this is completely changing, right? Given that statement, you could go as broad to say if there's a power loss, contact Election Central and then you can figure it out as you go. Well, I think we may have to resort to that. Otherwise, um, if you want to have a policy approved today, I think you're going to have to just uh, assign the process for decision making based on the specific circumstance of a particular power outage. be something as simple as, okay, we're delayed for an hour. Traffic failure and we have to set up a separate location and communicate that. But I don't know, uh, sitting here today, we can every single contingency. So I just said in the event of a power loss, um, the inspector and or judge shall immediately contact election central to report the circumstances and wait for the guidance from the election board. And that was kind of what happened the last time yeah. when fire alarm pulled and we were able to handle it, so. That works for uh, the board, Molly. So then the second one is severe weather and natural disaster, and it simply is um, a familiarize yourself with your poll location. Uh, and then B, in the event of uh, some severe weather warning, that information will be communicated to the judge, and I'm assuming it will be communicated either by Election Central or um, emergency notifications. So I will say that the poll books do have the alert feature that we can send out from Election Central's office to all poll locations or to a specific poll location that would alert them of any weather or if there were any other activities going on or taking place. So I just put Election Central and or emergency notifications because that way it can come from because I don't want a poll waiting for, you know, Election Central to be like, hey, there's a tornado warning when the sirens are going off. So. I could accommodate it for either or. Uh, so in those situations, you're either seeking shelter and it tells you to do that or you're evacuating. Um, the evacuation and shelters places are already in the training materials. Yes. And I think that's part of the poll specific information that the poll workers would receive from the inspector. Yeah. So for that, for the who, it would be the inspector and um, when it would be the night before, which is Monday night when they meet for setup. Um, The last bit is during an evacuation process and when safe to do so, I assume the inspector and or judge will be responsible for securing election materials and equipment in accordance with outlined in this plan. Is that who you anticipate doing it? Inspector I would say a bipartisan team, so the inspector and a Republican judge. And um, Kylie, is that the same for 6A? Yes, 6A would also be the inspector and Republican judge.
And then same thing with B, it will be the same as well. Well, the public we're talking about the securing of election material. And then it says they will secure any unvoted ballots and the inspector binder, which I think is the only equipment that um, Kylie identified needs secured. Correct. We have um, language here for extending poll hours if necessary. And that comes straight from the statute. And then the last bit is in any of these events, we obviously need to notify the impacted voters. And so <clears throat> I discussed with emergency management if we would be able to use their Everbridge alert system, which citizens can sign up for. So they said, of course. And so the first bit to notify in voters is he'll notify emergency management. And when they are able to do so, they will send out the alert. It's obviously contingent on whatever else they have going on. Um, that local radio stations will be notified. Um, the media source, the media who's requested notification of election board meetings would be notified. Um, we could post it on any social media site. And then if you contact the commissioner or administrator, she can also have it posted on the website and the commissioner's social media site. I think that encompasses a lot of way to get the information out, but those again are just suggestions. So if the election board has any concern with any of those notification sources or thinks that something else needs to be added, I'm happy to do so. And then the last bit is that signs will be posted at the impacted poll. And then the attorney and me, um, not just thinking of like natural disasters, but like a slip and fall at a poll site or something would suggest that an incident report be completed. And I don't know if you have a form, but I, I think there should be some form that at least documents who, what, when, where, and how and how in essence, so that we have a documentation at the event that litigation arises from such. At early voting, we do have a form that was obtained from the HR office for the county. I assume that form would be completed by inspector and or judge, like who do you envision? It would probably be the inspector that would take care of that situation. Well, I'm gonna, Put and or judge, because God forbid some it's the inspector who's impacted. Correct. They can't yeah. pull out the form. <laughs> inspector or judge, because yeah. those are the two that we rely on the most. Hey. Additional uh, comments, suggestions from uh, the board? I don't have any. Public? Or online. Say uh, thank you for the uh, lab on uh, finishing that document. All right, I'll entertain a motion. I have a motion uh, adopting the emergency policy resolution. I will make a motion to adopt the emergency policy resolution. Okay. Second. It's been moved and seconded. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 All right. Want to go back to the canvassing or should we keep moving with new business? We should keep moving. <laughs> All right. On their new business, we have letters appointment of election day workers. We received one from the um, Democratic Party chair. Do we have one from the Republican chair as well? We did receive um, one from them as well. So we have two documents from them, which will be attachment A and B. And I do have a resolution for this. It's the same as um, previous resolutions for poll workers. This is specifically for the election day workers. Correct. And, right. And then we'll do a second piece of business related to the for the student hall pass, or is that 
And there is one for the student hall pass because the student one specifically requires a unanimous vote. So we, I've separated them out because gen, the poll worker list does not require a unanimous. Any comments or questions from board, public, online? Okay, how about a motion regarding the um, I guess this would be an amendment. It'll essentially be an amendment eventually because we will continue adding more. And then if anybody moves around or decides that they can't work, they will be removed. I will make a motion to accept the appointments of the respective chairs, election day <laughs> workers. Second. Public comment or online? Those in favor, please say aye. 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 No opposed. Okay, uh, we, I think we only had one uh, request. Oh, one. Was there one from the? So on the one from the Republican Party, they sent the entire. Oh, it's incorporated in the. Other yeah, they sent the entire spreadsheet for all election day workers, including Democrat, Republican, and Hoosier Hall Pass students. Yeah, I see it. Sorry. No, you're fine. Me and Molly um, have had a little bit of discussion about that before the meeting, and I think we have decided that moving on, we might change the way that we send the lists. I don't think the list needs to be separated into Exhibit A and Exhibit B. In the recruiter's um, resolution, it states that they're working on a shared database. So for future, I think it might be easier just to attach a printout from the, assign or the uh, shared database, which alleviates the need for Election Central to go through and separate them into two separate parties. Are we moving uh, to adopt the? Uh, I do have I do have a student worker resolution, which is the same as you passed um, for the um, primary. It just identifies that we received the list um, today, identifying the students. Get a motion to approve those submissions. I will make a motion to for the or to accept the appointments of the Hoosier Hall Pass students. Second. Any public comment or online? Those in favor, please say aye. 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 Okay. And uh, I want to thank those students for stepping up. A good experience. All right, so I guess we are back to the resolution regarding uh, Canvas reporting. So I added subsection A, which reads that the results shall be reported to the media and party chairs by email similar to the manner results have been reported in the past. If possible, the results should be provided in a CSV format. This procedure shall govern unless an alternative process is identified by a working group of the election board tasked with developing the process for future reporting. Let's clarify then the... Um So it's, I guess I'm, I'm trying to understand that the, so we're, we're saying that the her and or her designee will deliver uh, those reports to the media party. That's saying that the information that goes to the press and the party chairs will be delivered in a CSV format? If possible. Um, I think that's what the party chairs expressed at a commissioner's meeting. But again, this is a policy decision, so I'm happy to edit that in any way the board would like. <laughs> Okay, 
I guess the, the question, just that last sentence, I think, um, implies that the way I'm reading it is that we working group for developing a process for the future. I'm interested in having a working group that's evaluating alternatives for this election as well as the future. So that if you have the capacity to create a reporting platform. And we can iterate as we go forward, but. How's that? I changed it to a reporting for the November 2024 election and future elections. I have a question. When it says the clerk and or her designee, is that a designee within her office? Yes, right? so I know that uh, Clerk Brown has a lot going on on election day. So if she you know, says, hey, I need to send this email to the media election supervisor, can you get that done for me? That gives her the authority to do that. So it's someone from within Election Central. That's how I envisioned it. Or, or um, your office, right? I don't know if you've ever had to go up the street to get somebody from the clerk's office to help. It's, it's only ever come from me. Okay. And I just wanted to, for the opportunity that if you know something happens, there's a, a backup. And if, but if you want me to put more specific language, I can say and or her designee from election office. Nicole, I feel like the only ones that you would really designate that to would be either myself or Laura, Chief Deputy. So that's correct. Any other uh, comments or questions, suggestions on language from the board? Comments from the uh, public or online? Do a motion to approve the resolution delegating unofficial tabulating results. So moved. Second. And moved and seconded. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Nay. Okay, it's been approved. I will send out a note here to a couple of folks to try and get our committee I with our open door laws and all rolling. Is there any other uh, business before the board? The only thing that I would say is um, I feel like we need to designate a day that we will meet again to get the rest of the election day workers added to this resolution so that by the time election day rolls around, everybody's on there and everybody can get paid. Based on uh, prior experience, Kylie, do you think that should be week of the 28th? So we do it once or? Um, well, I will say that since we generally meet the day before election day, we could make that the day that we appoint the rest of them since it's the night before. And then we could potentially recess until the 4th. Sorry, the day before the election is the fourth. Right. So we would recess until then, and then we would. So meet on the fourth. Mm -hmm. That can be the only item of business. Yeah. If we meet on the 4th, the election board comes together on the 4th to make sure the polling sites are ready that there right. is more than one item. So it would be two items, but the rest of it would be um, waiting for poll sites to call in to confirm that they're set up. Does that usually start at 4? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So what time would we be meeting on the 4th? 4. 4. 4 o'clock. And then that one would not have a set end time 
due to us not knowing when the last poll site will be set up. Motion to set that up or can we just do that? I will make a motion that we recess until the 4th, at which time we will address any outstanding poll workers that need to be approved by the board as well as um, to, co to come together for um, ensuring that the polling sites are set up and ready to go, to go for election day. Second. All right. Second. And for clarity, because if we're recessing, we have to state the exact date, time and location. So we are recessing until November, November 4th, 4th at 4, 4 p.m. PM. And that is at Election Central, correct? Correct. Okay. Do I have a second? Yeah. Oh, sorry. We do have a second. All right. Any public comment? Online comments? Seeing none. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Okay, great. Thank you. All right, that concludes all of our uh, business for uh, today's meeting. I believe we are in recess.